Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy, and in this video, we're going to be looking at a common error that we get when we read uh, or, or, or query a database a table for some data, um, and that is this error you can see here. It is MySQL fetch uh, a SOC, which uh, stands for Associative Array. Um, expects parameter one to be resource boolean given okay so it's quite a not a cryptic error but it's it's something that you might not immediately understand if you're new to php so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at uh, why the error is caused and we're going to be looking more in depth so you know hopefully you'll un you'll come away from this video understanding uh, why this error um, you know can be caused and we're also going to look at some techniques that we can use to start to solve this this problem so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the code that I'm using that's generated this error I've generated the error um, on purpose so I've, I've modified my code to to make it incorrect it won't immediately look incorrect but let's go ahead and look at what this is doing well, I'm doing this all in one file for just for clarity, but we're connecting to a database. We have a keyword that we're searching for, which is the, and I'm searching um, a, uh, a MySQL uh, database table here or querying a table. Uh, and you can see it's just got a list of, of different articles and a few have got the in. Uh, so essentially what we're doing is we're just saying select article title from articles where article like the so we're basically saying return anything that has the as in the uh, within it now the fact that i'm doing this doesn't you know matter it doesn't matter that i'm using like i, I just wanted to create a more complex example however if you have um, a, a query what however simple it is and we get and, and you've so you know not written the query correctly or there's some kind of syntax error uh, then you'll you'll have a problem here um, and this is the error that you may get. So uh, let's take a look first of all at the the error and what line it's on and, and everything like that and then determine uh, how we can sort of progress and try to solve this. So we've got the MySQL fetch a SOC, uh, a SOC uh, functions returning the error. That doesn't mean we've got anything wrong on line 12. Uh, let's go back to our code. Line 12 is here. Now you may think, well, there's something wrong uh, with my code on line 12. Well, in actual fact, it's saying that there's something wrong with what's been passed to the MySQL fetch ASOC, uh, ASOC function, or ASOC, however you want to pronounce it. And the problem is with the query itself. So the, the actual problem is with this line here. So the first thing that that's done is, you know, it's confused us. It said, well, the error's on this line. Uh, it's actually the query that's being passed to it. And a query is a parameter, is parameter one. Now with the MySQL fetch or SOC, we can pass another parameter to it too. And this is the, the database connection to use. We're not gonna worry about that, but that's where that part of the error comes from, parameter one. So remember we can pass two parameters I uh, maybe more I think it no I think it's just two yes yeah, two we can pass two parameters to this the first is the query and the second will be oh no it's not no sorry ignore ignore that um, anyway uh, this is the first parameter uh, if you if you're unsure of what can be passed this go to uh, the PHP manual at php.net um, so yeah uh, back to the point, we've got this query that's returning uh, something, you know, it's, it's returning false, essentially. It says here, boolean given. Now, if you understand the basics of, uh, of, of programming, a boolean is a value that is true or false, uh, or can sometimes be represented as sort of zero or one, depending on, on which language you're writing in. Anyway, uh, a boolean um, is, in this case, uh, being returned. Now, you know, we might think, well, you know, uh, what's the problem here? I don't understand. This query here is failing, and therefore the MySQL query function has returned false. Because it's returned false, we're passing false into here. So essentially what we're doing is this, okay? So I've changed this to false now, and I have, uh, you know, my query's not being used anywhere. Uh, so let's go ahead and refresh, and you can see that we get exactly the same problem. Okay, so we're still we're, we're passing essentially what was being passed before into this uh, function, and the reason being is that the query uh, is uh, you know isn't right. It, it doesn't. It's not being it's not being recognised as a query or, or something can't be you know 
uh, processed properly by MySQL. And the problem is, uh, if you haven't already noticed, that we've got where article like this, and in actual fact, if we look at our database, uh, the field is article title. So all I've done is I've specified an incorrect um, uh, field name for this. So I'd need to go ahead and correct this, uh, and then when I uh, would go and refresh, the, the problem would be solved. However, it might not always be that easy. You might have, say, a, a, a 10 line or a 10 uh, statement uh, query, which would you know, cause you some kind of problem looking through this for errors. Now, there's a couple of ways we can solve this. Uh, we can either go ahead and paste this into PHP My Admin, uh, or we can take a more sort of in file approach. But let's go ahead and we'll paste this into uh, PHP My Admin. Remember, any variables that you use within a query, you're going to need to substitute when you paste them into PHP My Admin. Uh, so let's go ahead and go up here to this SQL tab here, and let's go ahead and paste this query in. And let's go ahead and, and, and uh, substitute what we would normally have within the variable. Now, if this is like a user ID or an article ID or anything that you're passing through to it, uh, you're going to need to substitute it in with the correct data. You know, you're going to want it. You're essentially simulating what would happen within your code. So I've, I've, I've copied and pasted this in. Uh, now let's go ahead and click go and run this. Uh, and you see we get a more specific error back. So PHP is uh, really being stupid and it's it's not check well it's not being stupid but it's not doing the legwork for us it's not checking the query and and returning back an error on this query uh, but what it says here is it says unknown column article in where clause so it's saying where article so it's in this where clause is the problem and it's the fact that the uh, the field article the column article doesn't exist uh, and it's actually article title uh, so if i was to go ahead and correct this we would return uh, the results that we've already seen uh, on our page. So that's one way of going about it. However, you might not you know, want to go ahead and, and copy and paste and, and substitute uh, you know, different variables in. The other thing that we can do, which is uh, slightly easier, we can, we can look at the query with regards to what we've actually injected in through in terms of variables. So what we can do is we can go ahead and we can cut this out of here um, we could just say something like query string, go up here and create a new variable called qu qu query string. And what's going to happen now is uh, it's going to work the same way. We're going to pass uh, the query here into here. So it's going to work exactly the same way. We still get this error. Okay, now that I've changed uh, this back to uh, article instead of article title. But what we can actually do is we can go ahead and we can echo out query string. Now, the reason I sometimes use this method is if I'm passing lots of different variables into a query, you may find that some uh, some characters might not have been escaped. You might have, say, uh, some of these um, sort of back ticks in here. You might have anything that interferes with your query. And therefore, just by echoing out the string that you're passing through to the function, you can see on the page um, the query string itself. So when I refresh here, you can see that we've had this, uh, this variable substituted in. Now, if you had, say, something like the, and then you had, uh, I don't know, Let's put these in double quotes. Uh, you had the, and then let's just say you had a, a, a single quotation mark in there, uh, and you went and refreshed this. You'd know that, um, let's just change this to article title. So our query is now, uh, our query is now co correct. However, we're still getting this error back. And that's because I've included a single quotation mark in there. And that's interfering with the outside of here. So this is beside the point really. But what I'm saying is that when you echo out a, a query string like this, you can say, ah, that's the problem. I know that that's the problem because we're starting this here and it's not being escaped. So for example, if I was to go ahead and escape that and refresh, uh, we don't get this error here. You can see that the error has disappeared. Uh, it hasn't worked because this string with the single quotation mark can't be found. Uh, but again, uh, this is just you know as an example. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, you know to to go ahead and 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 use this process to try and determine the the cause of the error. You know echo things out. It doesn't matter. It's it's uh, no. It's it's uh, a good way to go about doing things. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Um, 
we'll leave this as it is because it will work in the same way. The other way to do this is to use um, a condition at the end of your MySQL query. Now MySQL query um, allows us to say or die. So we're, we're basically saying execute this function with this string or if something goes wrong, die. And then we can use the MySQL error function within within die, which will output this here. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to give us the error back that we saw in PHP MyAdmin a moment ago, but it's going to show it to us um, ah, that it, it, it's correct. So let's go ahead and, and modify it so it's not. It's going to show us the error within our page. So remember that um, that error that we saw earlier in PHP MyAdmin. Uh, we saw it up here somewhere. It's now been shown in our page. So we can now say, well, unknown column article. Oh, that makes sense. Article. You know, I don't have a field called article. Let me go ahead and make, make a change here. And this will also pass back any, uh, let's say, you know, there was a, an un, uh, an un um, escaped uh, quotation mark or something. Uh, this might give you a clue as to, as to what your problem is. So this helps you in both ways really. Uh, so it's a really, really good way to do things. But this is a, a really, really common error that a lot of people come across and it's only due to the nature of how the error is uh, explained to the user that it makes it really, really hard to determine what, is, what has actually gone wrong here because the error ends up uh, you know, it's saying, oh, it's on this line here when it's actually to do with your query. So hopefully that's cleared a few things up. Uh, we've explained, well, we've looked at the error as a whole. We've explained why the error happens because of, uh, of a false value being passed in because the query fails. And we've looked at a few methods that we can use to try and pick out this error uh, and make, uh, make adjustments uh, accordingly. So hopefully that's helped. Uh, and that is the, um, the, you know, probably the most common error that I have seen um, people get back to me on.